there's so much research out there that talks about how people are more likely to remember an experience more clearly, especially when it's associated with strong emotion, right? You think about 9-11, you think about your child's birth, you think about someone passing away, you know, it's very, very vivid. And those memories directly impact the psychology and therefore future human behavior, such as interacting with others and making decisions. Going back to having a baby, you know, I, I worked in the hospital for a very long time. And I remember um, father and mother, it was their second baby. And dad comes like, like a bull in a china shop coming in saying, I, I need pillows and I need the extra bed in my wife's room and I need this and I need that. And the staff found him to be so difficult. But when I actually sat down and took the time to talk to him, he was like, well, let me tell you how the birth of our first child went and how when I asked for a bed, they said that they didn't have any or they didn't know where the extra pillows were. So I'm trying to be proactive now. And it's like, again, if you actually take the time to understand the psychology and why he was acting that way, because they didn't set good expectations first, right? They 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 didn't the first time that he was there. And now he's carrying that over into his second visit. Nobody knows why. It's like, oh, he just walked in. We didn't even do anything yet. Well, well, you did a couple of years ago when he was here. You might not remember. And it might not have stuck out in your mind because you just couldn't find the pillow. But let me tell you how, how much that impacted their experience and their comfort level. Um, you know, research also indicates people don't always remember their experiences as they objectively happened. So more so through their own subjective or personal lens, again, how it made that individual feel, their perception, kind of like the internet phenomenon of the dress. You remember that? The, the mm -hmm. it, was, it was a blue and black dress, by the it way. It was definitely right? blue. Yeah. <laughs> Not white and gold. But I use that example in a lot of my trainings because people have various different perceptions. And for those that didn't see the dress as blue or black or didn't see it as white and gold, you know, some saw it as olive green, some saw it as purple. And I would say, does that make them the difficult customer, the difficult patient in the room because they see things differently than you do? Of course not, right? So considering the psychology of experience in general and more specifically patient experience comes down to that notion that our primary goal is to influence perception enough that it really improves a patient's physical and mental health. And of course, obviously their quality of life. I think leaders have to focus on striving to create those optimal experiences through, again, managing those expectations. Um, so patients aren't, aren't left alone to those cognitive biases and their personal expectations, or even just chance alone of something else happening. Um, I would say for the past two decades, patient experience has been plagued with the same challenges, right? Like we're not getting traction. They're getting plagued with the same challenges that we've been trying to solve logically time and time again. So as an example, long wait time to see a doctor. Okay, let's try to logically solve that by changing their scheduling template, telling them that they can only have a 15 visit 15 minute visit with a patient. Uh, let's start charging patients who are late or are no show or that ruin our whole scheduling throughout the day wrong <laughs> patient again it goes back to our, our previous conversation patients are not upset about the wait time itself they're upset about the duration or how long it feels without being communicated or informed uh, or giving them a distraction in the meantime uh, meaning if i go online and i see your urgent care says there's a 10 minute wait and then i get there check in and the wait's really an hour i'm going to be really annoyed and really frustrated if i went online and saw the wait was an hour and i got there and the wait was an hour and then someone just took the time to reiterate that the wait was going to be an hour. This is what you should expect. Then I'm pleased. So the irony there is that it's the same hour of time, but handled differently. Mm. Again, it's not the wait that upsets people. It's it's the duration of the wait. So going back, going back to your original question about psychology, I always go down like these rabbit holes. So going <laughs> back to psychology, this practical, logical solution approach is not enough to drive and change and transform the human experience in healthcare. We need to begin to use a psychological approach. That means if your logical solutions haven't prevailed, if they haven't worked after 20 years, it's time to take a different approach, a psychological one, and meet patients where they're at, not where you'd like them to be.